And Senator Feinstein. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, as we, as you have made abundantly clear, we are here at your request to examine Crossfire Hurricane. That's the FBI investigation into Russian election interference and ties to the Trump campaign. Let me begin with a bit of history. The president has long claimed that the investigation of his campaign was a witch hunt and a hoax and has demanded that his allies, quote, investigate the investigators, end quote, and other Obama-era officials, including Joe Biden. As support for this claim, the president and his allies point to errors identified by DOJ Inspector General Michael Horowitz in FISA surveillance on former Trump campaign aide Carter Page. Inspector General Horowitz did, in fact, identify serious errors in the handling of the Carter Page FISA application. A broader FISA, FISA audit revealed that many of these problems are unfortunately widespread. This needs to be fixed, and efforts to do so are already underway in the FBI, Congress, and the FISA court itself. But contrary to the President's claims that his campaign was unfairly targeted, Inspector General Horowitz found no evidence of political or anti-Trump bias in the Crossfire Hurricane investigation. I've watched this IG carefully now since 2012, that's eight years, and find him an in, to be independent and believable. And Inspector General Horowitz also confirmed that the opening of the investigation into possible ties between the Trump campaign and Russia was, in fact, justified. As Horowitz's report explains, Australian officials informed the FBI in late July 2016 that Trump campaign advisor George Papadopoulos was told in April that Russia was willing to, quote, assist the campaign, meaning assist the Trump campaign, by anonymously releasing dirt on Clinton in the form of, quote, thousands of emails, end quote. The FBI learned this one week after WikiLeaks had released 20,000 emails that Russia had hacked from the computers of the Democratic National Committee. The hacks by Russia and the possibility that the Trump campaign knew of Russia's plans to use the stolen emails to interfere in the 2016 election created a counterintelligence concern that the FBI was obligated to investigate. I think everybody would recognize that. That counterintelligence investigation eventually became the Mueller investigation. When in May 2017, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein appointed Bob Mueller as special counsel after the president fired FBI Director James Comey. Mueller's investigation revealed, quote, sweeping and systematic, end quote, interference by Russia in the 2016 election. That should cause every one that's American some deep concern. Significantly, the special counsel investigation determined that the Russian government, quote, perceived it would benefit from a Trump presidency and work to secure the outcome, end quote. That's from the Mueller Report, volume one, page one. The investigation uncovered more than 120 contacts between the Trump campaign and individuals linked to Russia, revealing that the Trump campaign knew about, welcomed, and quote, expected it would benefit electorally, end quote, from Russia's interference. And the investigation established that individuals associated with the Trump campaign lied to Congress, the special counsel, 
and the American people about their contacts with Russia. I.G. Horowitz confirmed that none of the FISA errors his investigation uncovered call into question, quote, any part of the special counsel's report, end quote. And today's witness, Mr. Rosenstein, has said that the special counsel investigation was, quote, justified, end quote, and, quote, an, inspect, an important investigation, end quote. Unfortunately, the president and his allies have been trying to rewrite the special counsel's findings since the day they were released. <clears throat> but ignoring or excusing what happened in 2016 is really very dangerous. It puts American democracy and national security at risk. FBI Director Ray has confirmed that Russia continues to interfere and that its attempt to influence the 2020 election, quote, a significant counterintelligence threat, end quote. Special Counsel Mueller also warned that Russian interference was happening, quote, as we sit here, end quote. Yet instead of denouncing foreign interference, President Trump has encouraged and even demanded it. In a televised interview following the Mueller report, President Trump said there was, quote, nothing wrong, end quote, with foreign governments offering political dirt on an opponent, and that he would, quote, take it, end quote, likely without informing the FBI. The president publicly called on China to investigate Joe Biden, his rival, in the 2020 election. That's in 10-3-19 remarks of the president. And the president abused presidential authority by withholding critical United States military aid and an Oval Office meeting in an effort to pressure Ukraine's president into announcing an investigation of Joe Biden. Unfortunately, it appears that Senate Republicans now plan to spend the next several months bolstering the president's attack on the Russia investigation and his Democratic nominee, Democrat, uh, Democrat Joe Biden. Congress should not conduct politically motivated investigations designed to attack or help any presidential candidate, Mr. Chairman, period. This would be true at any time, but even more so now, as our nation confronts the brutal police killing of George Floyd and its aftermath and remains in the middle of a public health and economic crisis. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Feinstein. Thank you and welcome. Um, I'd like to begin with the impact of the Steele dossier, if I might. <clears throat> Inspector General Horowitz confirmed that the Crossfire Hurricane investigation, <clears throat> excuse me, was open because the FBI was told the Trump campaign advisor, George Papadopoulos, had advanced knowledge that Russia was planning to release stolen emails from, to harm uh, Clinton and help Trump. The FBI officials who made that decision had not even seen the Steele dossier. But because the Steele dossier was cited in the Carter Page FISA applications, the president and his allies <clears throat> falsely claim that the entire Russia investigation was started because the Steele dossier would never have happened if it hadn't been for Steele's reporting. You appointed Special Counsel Mueller. Is that true? Yes. You supervised Mueller's investigation. Please, can you identify for us any findings in Mueller's 448-page report that rely on information from the Steele do dossier. I don't believe there is any such information. Thank you. Can you identify which of the 199 criminal counts resulting from the Mueller investigation rely on information from the Steele dossier? 
I don't believe that the Steele dossier was relied upon for the indictments. Thank you. Can you identify investigative steps taken by Mueller that relied <clears throat> on invest information in the Steele dossier? I, I wouldn't know the answer to that, Senator, with regard to individual steps. Thank you. Did Special Counsel Mueller ever express concern that FBI or DOJ officials had unfairly targeted the president or his campaign for investigation? I never had that discussion with Mr. Mueller. Did he ever indicate that there was not a legitimate reason to investigate ties between the Trump campaign and Russia? He, he never uh, indicated, Senator, that there was not a legitimate reason to complete the investigation. Did you ever have any concerns that Mueller's investigation was illegitimate, biased, unfairly targeted the president or his campaign? I talked with Mr. Mueller about uh, ensuring that there was no bias in the investigation. As you know, we did have an issue with uh, one of the agents uh, and another FBI employee who were working on the case. And I talked with Mr. Mueller at that time and subsequently about the importance of making sure that everybody on his investigation understood whatever their political views that they needed to set that aside and make sure that the investigation was not affected by any bias. And do you believe that was carried out? I do because I have confidence in Mr. Mueller's integrity. Do you believe the Mueller investigation was a hoax or a witch hunt or a deep state conspiracy? I do not believe the investigation was a hoax, Senator, but with regard to the nature of the allegations, keep in mind those allegations uh, are coming from other sources and I can't vouch for the allegations. You signed off on all significant steps in the Mueller investigation. Was that because you believed them to be legitimate and supported by the evidence? I, I, everything that I approved, Senator, yes, and, and nothing came to my attention that I thought was illegitimate. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Grassley. Yeah. Thank you, thank you uh, for being here. You know, I, I've not been uh, shy about the fact, I even noted it uh, with Senator Lee in a in, uh, joint op-ed in the Washington Post last month that the FBI had made serious mistakes during its surveillance of former Trump campaign advisor Carter Page. The uh, FISA renewal application presented to you for approval in June 2017 was one of those. The committee already held a hearing on this last December after Inspector General Horowitz released his 478-page uh, report. I, you said you have that with you. There, those are crossfire hurricane, which became the broader Russia investigation. Counterintelligence investigations into Paul Manafort, George Papadopoulos, Michael Flynn, all of whom were convicted of felonies, and Carter Page. Now, the only time, as I understand, the FBI applied for a FISA surveillance order in these five investigations, the only time they did was with, with respect to Carter Page. Is that correct? That's my understanding, yes, sir. Thank you. And the uh, 17 errors the Inspector General found with respect to the Carter Page FISA application all came after, so they would not impact the launch of the broader Russian investigation, is that correct? I believe that's correct. Thank you. Now, the Mueller report is 448 pages. Uh, do you know how many pages of the 448 referred to Carter Page? I do not. Uh, I'll let you know it's seven. So seven pages on that 441 on other matters. So I, I mentioned this because I think the Carter Page case demonstrates the FISA application process itself is flawed. It's not subject to enough scrutiny. Another report last March, the um, Inspector General found that of 29 FBI applications for FISA surveillance he reviewed, 25 or 86 percent of them had an average of 20 issues each. That's what I mean about the scrutiny. Now, the intelligence community 
made a unanimous assessment and that was shared by the bipartisan, the Republicans and Democrats alike in the Senate Intelligence Committee, that Russia interfered in our elections. Uh, do you agree that the FBI's errors in the Carter Page case don't undermine those unanimous assessments? Yes. Yes, I do agree. Thank you. So we do have then the unanimous assessment within the intelligence community and the Republicans and Democrats on the Senate Intelligence Committee, Russia interfered in our election. Now, I believe this is interference that the Trump campaign welcomed and attempted to exploit. Uh, Mr. Putin, are you listening and so on? Any argument suggesting that the Russian investigation should have never occurred and the American people should be in the dark about Russia's interference in our country's election in 2016, I find that deeply troubling. I believe that serves Vladimir Putin's interests more than ours. I believe you would agree with me that we should not have any countries, whether it's Russia or anybody else, interfering with fair and uh, free and fair elections in this country. Is that correct? I do agree with you on that, Senator. And as Deputy Attorney General and for a while Supervisor of the Russia investigation, the special counsel reported to you, before you sought any indictments, the special counsel provided you with an explanation of his charging decisions, including against a dozen Russian nationals and military intelligence officers, as well as Paul Manafort, Michael Flynn, and George Papadopoulos. You didn't object to those charging decisions or the indictments, is that correct? It's true that I didn't object, Senator, but um, I actually don't sign the indictments. But you found nothing that, to object to them? I was not aware of any reason to object to any Thank of the you. charges. And while supervising the Russian investigation, you never rejected an explicit request by the special counsel to take an investigative step or pursue an indictment, is that correct? That's correct. Thank you very much. I, uh, I want the chairman to notice it. You did well. Unlike my colleagues on the other side, I kept exactly you, five you, minutes. You, you set the standard for the rest of yeah, us. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, but you did mention a very important point, and I can't remember what it was, and I'll think of it in a minute. Thank you, Senator Durbin. Thank you, Mr. Rosenstein. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I miss baseball. <laughs> Obviously, a lot of Americans miss baseball as well. They're broadcasting old baseball games now, and I'm watching them. And I'm wondering today, the people who've tuned into this hearing over C-SPAN of the Senate Judiciary Committee must think they're watching a rerun, a classic hearing of several years ago on the Mueller report. But unfortunately, this is not a rerun. This is the priority of the Senate Judiciary Committee today today in June of 2020. Those who tuned in might have expected that we'd have a hearing concerning the public health crisis facing America, the pandemic which we're fighting every day, which has claimed over 100,000 American lives. They might think we would consider the issue of profiteering in this pandemic within the jurisdiction of this committee, but we're not. Perhaps we'd take up the issue of privacy and contact tracing, an important issue, but we're not taking that up either. They might wonder if we would actually have a markup to establish legitimate public health standards to protect Americans and American businesses, but we're not. They might even wonder if we would take up the issue of racism in the administration of justice in America, certainly a timely topic, but we are not. They might wonder if we would ask a question about President Trump's suggestion 48 hours ago that he would have a federal militarization of law enforcement across the United States, certainly a significant constitutional issue, but no, we're not taking that up today. Instead, we're taking up the Mueller report, an investigation that was completed more than a year ago. Why? We're taking it up because it has become a bloody shirt on the right. Listen to what the Attorney General of the United States said two weeks ago in a quote at a Department of Justice press conference about the investigation, Mr. Rosenstein, which you were in charge of. 
It was a grave injustice, and it was unprecedented in American history. The law enforcement and intelligence apparatus of this country were involved in advancing a false and utterly baseless Russian collusion narrative against the president. The proper investigative and prosecutive standards of the Department of Justice were abused, in my view, in order to reach a particular result. Mr. Rosenstein, the Attorney General of the United States, called it a false and utterly baseless Russian collusion narrative against the president. There have been other things said, too. The chairman of the committee on December the 9th described the FBI's counterintelligence investigation as an endeavor that, quote, became a criminal conspiracy to defraud the court to trample on the rights of an American citizen, Mr. Carter Page. He went on today, this morning, in talking about whether we should has any lawful predicate to appoint Mueller to begin with. He called up the Hurricane Crossfire one of the most corrupt, biased investigations in the history of the FBI. Mr. Rosenstein, that was an investigation that you were in charge of. It was conducted by an individual that you personally selected. Do you consider it to be an utterly baseless, corrupt criminal investigation as you reflect on it today? I do not consider the investigation to be corrupt, Senator. Um, but I certainly understand, you know, I understand the president's frustration given the outcome, which was in fact that there was no evidence of conspiracy between Trump campaign advisors uh, and Russians. We are about to embark on an investigation by this committee, which may be the largest investigation I've ever witnessed here. Tomorrow, I understand the chairman is going to ask for authority to issue 53 subpoenas for witnesses. What an irony that we began this year in an impeachment trial where the Republicans refused to produce one document or one witness, not one witness, when it came to questions of the impeachment of the president. Tomorrow, there will be 53 names submitted, and they will not be cleared with the minority. As I understand the proposal by the chairman, he alone will have the authority to decide which ones to call. We will attempt to amend his subpoena on the Democratic side to make sure that if we are clearly trying to find the truth in this matter about whether this was an utterly baseless investigation, we believe we should also be calling a few other witnesses. How about Michael Cohen, who negotiated a Trump Tower Moscow deal until at least June of 2016? Perhaps Paul Manafort, repeatedly passing campaign information to Konstantin Kalimnik, who had Russian intelligence ties. Konstantin Kalimnik himself, Manafort's Russian national business partner, partner, which Mueller found to have Russian intelligence ties. Rick Gates, deputy chairman, who instructed Manafort to feed campaign information to Kalimnik. George Papadopoulos, whose comments prompted the opening of the FBI investigation, Michael Flynn, Roger Stone, there are more on the list. If we truly want to get to the bottom of this and bring all the witnesses in as to whether this was a baseless claim of Russian collusion with anyone in the United States, certainly we want the record to be complete, don't we? Don't we want witnesses to give us complete testimony? I would hope so. Mr. Rosenstein, let me ask you the bottom line question when it comes to what we are considering today. Mr. Mueller, whom I respect, though I may disagree with in one context or another, reached some very basic conclusions in light of any wrongdoing in the FISA court involving Carter Page and others and all the information you know today. Mr. Rosenstein, do you disagree with the key finding of Mr. Mueller that Russia interfered in the 2016 presidential campaign in a sweeping and systematic fashion? I agree with that finding. Do you agree the Russian government perceived it would benefit from a Trump presidency and work to secure that outcome? I don't know what the government was thinking, Senator. I can only uh, tell you what their conduct was. Do you agree that there were more than 120 contacts, as Mr. Mueller found in his report, between the Trump campaign and individuals linked to Russia? I have no reason to, to dispute that. Do you agree the Trump campaign knew about, welcomed, and expected to benefit electorally from Russia's interference, as Mr. Mueller found in his report? What page are you referring to, Senator? I'm happy to tell you. It's page, volume one, pages one and two. Uh, 
I, I'm not sure whether you were quoting from the report, Senator, but uh, I have it in front of me. Statement within the report, volume one, pages one and two. Yes, sir, I have it right here. Trump campaign knew about, welcomed, and expected to benefit electorally from Russia's interference. Do you disagree with that? Have any reason to disagree with that finding? Yeah, I apologize, Senator. I'm not seeing those words in the report. If you could direct me to where oh, it is in the report, I'll, I'll be happy to. I, I will. I don't have it at the moment in front of me, but I will produce it. Do you disagree with the Mueller report conclusion the Trump campaign planned a press strategy, a communications campaign, and a messaging based on possible release of Clinton emails by WikiLeaks? Volume 1, page 54. Uh, that, that says, according to Mr. Gates, that's attributed to Mr. Gates. I don't think that's a finding of, the, of Mueller, but it's, it's what one of the uh, witnesses said. Do you have any reason to believe it's not true? I, I have no, no information beyond the fact that uh, the witness said it, Senator. The bottom line is this. For over a year, this report has been public. It has been debated. It has been parsed, analyzed, and the bottom line conclusions have not been disputed. Though there may have been some wrongdoing involving any one person in the investigation, it still it boggles the mind that the Attorney General of the United States would say this is baseless. I yield. Thank you, and I'll <clears throat> turn to Senator Lee in a minute, but I'm going to respond, if I may. Why else? Thank you, Chairman. Welcome back to the uh, incredible shrinking Judiciary Committee, uh, Mr. Rosenstein. Uh, we used to have a say in circuit court nominees. Now nothing protects them, even having to come from our states. We gave that away. We used to oversee executive privilege claims. Now a witness utters the word privilege and we shrivel up. We gave that away. We used to screen out extremist and unqualified judges. Now it's hard to see any bottom to whom we'll confirm. We gave that away. And we face the danger now that this committee this historic committee is going to begin running political investigatory errands. Um, I think facing that risk, it is worth having some assurances about how this is going to be conducted. And I say this based on the experience of looking at the House Intelligence Committee uh, and the Republican side of that committee and its efforts to disparage and interfere with the Mueller campaign. That has not yet been fully investigated. I don't believe that Mueller investigated any linkage uh, between the House Intelligence Committee Republicans' efforts and the White House or their efforts and Trump's lawyers. But I strongly suspect that the House Intelligence Committee Republicans were advised, controlled, or directed by Trump lawyers either in the White House or on the Trump legal team. And that sorry experience, if that is in fact the case, again, investigation would reveal it, but we have had no investigation, should not be replicated in the Senate Judiciary Committee. I hope that we can receive appropriate assurances here that whatever investigation we undertake will not be controlled by the Trump White House and will not be controlled by the Trump campaign. As we pursue this oversight, one other aspect of the incredible shrinking Judiciary Committee is that we used to require the FBI and the Department of Justice to answer our questions. Now we just get ignored. There is a bin someplace at the FBI and the Department of Justice into which our questions get thrown. And uh, Mr. Rosenstein, you were sworn in on February 1st, 2017. As Deputy Attorney General, you resigned from the department on May 11th, 2019. In between those dates, we had hearings on 
May 2nd, 2017, May 24th, 2017, June 27th, 2017, October 18th, 2017, December 6th, 2017, February 6th, 2018, March 13th, 2018, June 12th, 2018, June 18th, 2018, June 26th, 2018, July 18th, 2018, July 31st, 2018, December 12th, 2018, and May 1st, 2019, with Department of Justice witnesses, and none, none of the committee's questions for the record were answered. Ever. None. Can you explain why that took place, Mr. Rosenstein, under your watch? Where was the policy not to answer this committee's questions? Did it come from you? Did it come from the Attorney General? Did it come from the White House? Did it come from OMB? Why were QFRs never answered? Where was that policy founded? Senator, I, I recall answering some correspondence. Um, Letters are a whole separate issue. I can got a whole separate case on those, mm -hmm. but I'm focusing now on committee questions for the record. Why not? Well, Where's the not, policy uh, from? Who I, told I, you not to answer these questions? Where did that come from? Where is that in the department? I know that I testified in my confirmation hearing, which would have been in March of 2017, and I answered questions for the record, I believe, in, in following, including there may have been some from you, after that hearing? These are all the ones I listed, and in all of them, no questions for the record were answered. That's a lot of hearings with no questions for the record answered. Where did I that come I, from? I, I don't believe that I testified at any of those hearings, Senator, so I, it's just not. No, I'm thinking that there's a policy at the Department of Justice not to answer committee QFRs. That's the only explanation, unless you think it's a coincidence that in all those hearings, no QFRs got answered. I, I, Something's I, up, and it makes me really frustrated, and a particular, partic we sent a letter to Chairman Graham, all of us, on February 11th about this, of this year, because it has gotten so frustrating that there is a policy somewhere in this administration not to answer committee QFRs. And now we can't even get a QFR answered. Now to the clear blue sky, the first thing we're investigating is the exact thing that the Trump campaign wants us to investigate. The only time we ask for anything from this department is when it's a political errand. And every other time you can't even get a decent QFR answered, ever. And I can go through the letters that I haven't gotten any answer to either. But there is a stone wall and we should not be selective about whose information gets through the stone wall at the department, and this, Mr. Rosenstein, happened on your watch. My time is up. Senator Whitehouse, Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, may I ask a QFR? Yes, you may. As to what the heck is going on with our non-response to QFRs, that one may go in the bin at the Department of Justice as well with all the others and never get answered. But the day will come I agree. when there is a Democrat Department of Justice and Attorney General. The day will come when there is a Democrat sitting in that chair and a policy that you don't ever get QFRs answered by the department that we oversee is not a good policy. It is someone's policy, and I want it stopped. Thank you very much. And as to the hearing yesterday, there were a lot of questions asked about COVID-19 and prisons, and I expect uh, hopefully those will get answered, particularly Senator uh, Blumenthal's questions about the court case. So um, point well made. Senator Thank Klobuchar, you. thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, welcome back. Uh, Mr. Rosenstein, Thank you, Senator. Uh, I have made very clear that I think that it is absurd to be having this hearing. Uh, I know we're going to have a hearing, which I appreciate, on criminal justice reform uh, in a few weeks after the murder of George Floyd in my state. Uh, but I think we could also be doing so many other things on the pandemic, on the effect that the pandemic has had on immigration policy. But we are here today. I thought that was absurd, but then I heard Senator Cruz. And I have to say, to compare Richard Nixon to Barack Obama, Richard Nixon, who left the White House in disgrace, to compare him with President Obama, who left the White House with grace and with dignity, something we miss 
very much, especially this week, when we saw the President of the United States using the Bible as a prop in front of a church in Washington, D.C., um, after the Justice Department tear-gassed peaceful protesters in order to set the stage for that press conference. No, I would like the record to reflect that this comparison is not only wrong today between Richard Nixon and Barack Obama, it will never stand the test of time. So let me start out with this, Mr. Rosenstein. Uh, you appointed Special Counsel Robert Mueller to oversee the FBI's counterintelligence investigation to sh ensure that it was conducted independently in May of 2017. Uh, the special counsel found that Russian interference in our election was sweeping and systematic and that the investigation, as you know, ultimately resulted in 34 indictments of individuals and the convictions of six of President Trump's associates and advisors on federal charges. Last May, you said that there was, quote, overwhelming evidence that Russian operatives hacked American computers and defrauded American citizens, end quote, as, quote, part of a comprehensive Russian strategy to influence elections, promote social discord, and undermine America, end quote. Do you still agree with that statement? Yes, I do. Are you aware of any facts that call into question the finding in the special counsel's report that the Russian government interfered in the 2016 presidential election in sweeping and systematic fashion, or that the Russian government perceived it would benefit from a Trump presidency and work to secure that outcome? Are there any facts that you're quoting that? from the report, Senator? I, I, I certainly. I believe that uh, Director Mueller's report accurately reflects his conclusions. Okay. Obviously, I don't know what's in the mind of the Russians. We can only evaluate the evidence that we have, uh, and that's what the intelligence suggests. Okay. Are you aware of any facts that call into question the assessment of FBI Director Ray, which is, by the way, backed up by many, many Trump intelligence officials, that Russia's interference in our elections is ongoing, that its interference in the 2018 midterms, in Christopher Wray's words, were a dress rehearsal for the 2020 elections. Are you aware of anything that would lead you to think that Russian interference in our elections going forward has stopped? I am not aware of anything that would suggest it stopped. And while I was an office senator, I actually spent a fair amount of time <clears throat> working with Director Ray and other officials to try to combat foreign interference. Okay, and given the threat to our democracy posed by foreign election interference, while we, by the way, have the threat of voter suppression due to this pandemic and other laws, it is critical that we remain focused on the facts. Uh, the Inspector General's report found on page 17 uh, that the investigation, the Crossfire Hurricane investigation, was open to determine whether people associated with the Trump campaign were coordinating with the Russian government. Do you disagree with that? That is my understanding, Senator. And so we are clear, coordinating with a foreign power as part of a political campaign, especially a foreign adversary like Russia, would pose a threat to national security. Is that correct? It would if it were true, yes. Okay. And do you agree that interference in our elections by foreign governments constitutes a national security threat? Yes. Okay. So that is why I would like to look forward. And when you look forward, what do you see in front of us? You see this ongoing threat to our democracy, uh, which is why I have advocated so strongly along with Senator Langford, Senator Graham, uh, so many for backup paper ballots in our election. Uh, it is part of the reason why I think that the mail-in ballots, in addition to protecting the health and safety of voters, uh, would protect us from foreign interference, and that's why you have Republican-dominated states like Utah have used these mail-in ballots. It would be helpful in that way. And one other policy idea here is uh, that uh, we need to do, as we continue to see ongoing attempts by foreign governments to influence our elections on social media, um, Senator Graham and I and Senator Warren have put forward the Honest Ads Act. Are you familiar with that bill? No, I'm not. Okay, well, that is a bill um, that would require the same disclosure rules and disclaimer rules for political ads that we have for ads that we see on TV. Uh, it would simply require that when uh, someone gets an ad for a political campaign or an issue ad that's paid for and meets the federal standards that they would um, in other forums, that you have to have a disclosure on them and that you have to make a public record of this ad. 
And I just want to again remind my colleagues of this bill because after years, Senator McCain first did this bill with me, it's still sitting dormant. Um, and I think that when you look at what the Senate Intelligence Committee just recommended um, was that we should bring our laws into the 21st century to ensure that voters are able to know who is paying to influence our political system uh, at the very least, when we know we also have unpaid influence, um, do you think it would be helpful to know who is paying to influence our political system? Senator, I'm very reluctant <coughs> to express a view about your legislation on yes. the spur of the moment, but I'll be happy to take a look at it. I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you. Senator Hawley. And uh, we're on it. I think it's important. And I think it's important Senator Coons be called on right now. Mr. Chairman, if I could just follow up, though, because I, I'm accountable. I feel accountable for anything that went wrong in the department on my watch. But I think the issue is how do we fix the problem? I, I, I understand what you're saying. Senator Coons. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, let me make sure this is on. Mr. Chairman. Um, Uh, Mr. Rosenstein, thank you um, for your testimony today and for your service. Uh, we have some important questions in front of us. Uh, as we know, President Trump uh, has often repeatedly and loudly called the entire Russia investigation a witch hunt. But Inspector General Horowitz found the FBI had an authorized purpose when it opened Crossfire Hurricane, which was grounded in protecting our national security and investigating federal crimes. Do you agree with that conclusion? Yes, I do. Um, do you believe the whole Russia investigation was a fraud and a witch hunt? No. In your oversight role over the special counsel's investigation, uh, see if you can get him a new mic there. Can you get? Is my microphone working at all? We'll try that. Thank you very much. Excuse me, let me try again. Is that much better? If I might, Mr. Chairman, I'm just going to start again. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, Mr. Rosenstein, thank you uh, for your testimony and for your service uh, and for your appearance before us today. Uh, President Trump has called the Russia investigation a witch hunt, which um, is in sharp contrast with Inspector General Horowitz, who concluded that the FBI had an authorized purpose when it opened Crossfire Hurricane which was grounded in protecting our national security and investigating federal crimes. Do you agree with that conclusion? I agree with uh, Inspector Horowitz's conclusion, yes, sir. In your oversight role uh, over Special Counsel Mueller's investigation, did you ever raise a concern about the appropriateness of the investigation and prosecution of Michael Flynn? I was not aware of any reason to question the appropriateness at that time. Y you were the acting attorney general for that investigation. Did you approve of his guilty plea? Yes, sir, based on my understanding that the evidence demonstrated his guilt and he and his attorneys admitted his guilt. Um, did you ever raise any concerns about whether Flynn's false statements were material to the FBI's national security investigation? I was not aware of any issue. And are you aware of any precedent for the Department of Justice moving to dismiss a case after a defendant pled guilty to lying to the FBI? I, I don't know the answer to that, Senator. There may be. I, I'm, I'm not personally aware, but... Uh, the department certainly has moved to dismiss cases in the past. You authorized filing the indictment in the Roger Stone case as well, correct? Correct. And a jury convicted Roger Actually, Stone let me, of seven uh, felony if, counts. If I could just clarify, I believe that, uh, I don't believe I was acting attorney general at the time the Stone case was filed, so I'm certainly aware of it, but I don't know that I, uh, uh, as a legal matter, I don't know that I authorized it. In any event, a jury ultimately convicted Roger Stone of seven felony counts in the indictment. Um, do you think Roger Stone committed those crimes of which he was convicted? Based upon the jury's verdict, yes. And in the Roger Stone case, career prosecutors filed a sentencing motion, and the political leadership of the department filed a different motion within a day. The career attorneys then withdrew from the case, and one went further and resigned from the department. Are you aware of any other recent case where political appointees filed a sentencing recommendation that is so markedly different from what career prosecutors had filed? I understand your question, Senator. The only issue I would take with it is that technically every pleading we filed contains the name of the U.S. attorney. Um, you're focusing on whose signature appears on the document, but all those documents are filed in the name of the U.S. attorney, and I considered U.S. attorneys responsible for them. 
do you think a president should publicly criticize, question, or attack ongoing Department of Justice investigations? I'm not going to comment on the president, Senator, as I think I've made clear. Uh, I understood the president's frustration. Uh, I don't think it's my job to comment on how he articulates that. Well, the president has recently referred repeatedly to something he calls Obamagate, uh, which he has repeatedly said is worse than Watergate. And repeated efforts uh, by members of this committee, by journalists, to get any clarity or definition about what Obamagate is uh, have come up without any clarity. Are you aware of any evidence that former President Obama has committed any federal crime? I am not. There's been a lot of discussion in this hearing, in particular about the Carter Page FISA warrant um, and the findings in the Inspector General's report uh, that I think are worthy of concern and focus. Carter Page, though, was not indicted in the Mueller investigation, correct? Correct, not indicted and presumed innocent. I think it's unfortunate that that FISA information was leaked. Um, the, in fact, by the end of it, the president's campaign manager, deputy campaign manager, national security advisor, foreign policy advisor, personal attorney, and longtime political strategist were all either convicted of crimes or pled guilty in federal court. You approved of the significant investigative steps in those cases and approved the filing of those charges. Is that correct? As I said, I don't know that uh, I was there for the last one, but uh, uh, I believe all the charges that were filed were legitimate. And in January 2020, you were quoted in the Washington Post saying, certainly in retrospect, there are things I might have done differently, but I think we got all the big issues right. Do you still think that you got the big issues right? Yes, sir. And I, I wasn't referring just to Russia. There were a lot of big issues, obviously, and uh, I believe we did, we being the team we had in place at the department, uh, that uh, I believe we got the big issues right. Well, I'll just close by saying, um, you know, I too am questioning uh, the scope and the reach uh, of the dedication of time of this committee to reinvestigating what I think Inspector General Horowitz has thoroughly investigated. Um, we are in the middle of three simultaneous national crises, uh, a public health epidemic, an economic um, sharp, short downturn, and understandable nationwide protests uh, inflamed by anger at the uh, brutal and public killing of George Floyd at the hands of Minneapolis police. There are many other pressing issues uh, that I hope this committee will soon turn to, and I appreciate your testimony before us today. Thank you, Senator. Thanks, Senator Coons, and I assure you we will get to other issues, but I guess I guess I'd just say this before I call on our next senator. Senator Blumenthal. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want to join as a former prosecutor, as U.S. Attorney and State Attorney General in expressing my agreement that we owe a great debt of gratitude to the men and women in state and local police, in the FBI, in law enforcement generally, as we do to our United States military that are helping to keep us safe and free. And my fear is that that immense power may be misused by political leaders who apply them in ways that, in fact, interfere with our freedoms, our constitutionally guaranteed right. And that's one of the reasons why I will join next week with my colleague, Senator Kane in offering amendments to the National Defense Authorization Act that would restrict the president's power to misuse that military and police force, in fact, to federalize and militarize law enforcement. And that's why also I will introduce measures that would restrict the overbroad and virtually undefined powers of the president under the Insurrection Act so that he will be held accountable. And while we're talking about reform, and the chairman has said we should be looking forward, let's talk about FISA reform. And if we're looking for ways to improve and that law and prevent any sorts of errors in the future, why not adopt those reforms? I've advocated them. I'm looking for Republican partners in that effort, as I did under President Obama when I first suggested, for example, that there be an adversarial process 
in the FISA process to make sure that any errors were eliminated. The, pre the chairman has said that the Mueller investigation went, quote, off the rails. If that investigation was off the rails, that's a pretty remarkable train to deliver the results that it did. And those results included 199 criminal charges, 37 indictments, nine convictions, five prison sentences. Let me ask you, uh, Mr. Rosenstein, and I should just remind you at the very outset, I was the only member of the committee who voted against you. I was. I'm well aware of that, Senator. I was one of the six on the floor of the Senate who voted against you. And my reason was solely that you refused to commit that you would appoint a special counsel. And then you did. And I lauded you for it. And I defended you for preserving the independence of that investigation. Let me ask you, is it your testimony today that had you known then what you know now, that you would not have appointed Robert Mueller to serve as special counsel? I believed at the time, Senator, and I still believe it was the right decision under the circumstances. I recognize people can criticize me for it. That's, that's the consequence of being in these jobs. You make decisions and then you get criticized for them. But I believe it was the right decision at the time. And is it your testimony today that if you had known then what you knew what you know now, that you would have intervened in or stopped that investigation? Based on what I know, Senator, no. But I don't know everything, and I'm, I'm open to the possibility there's more information that may come out. And, and uh, if, if more information emerges, uh, well, I'll let me give my you, views. Well, let me give you, Mr. Rosenstein, a quote that I think is dispositive today, and dispositive probably for the future. And it comes from the Inspector General, whose report you have in front of you. Correct. Quote, we don't take issue with any part of the special counsel's report. Mm -hmm. Let me repeat it. We don't take issue with any part of the special counsel's report. That was his testimony before this committee in December when he presented his report. So after all of the umbrage and outrage and heated political rhetoric, the report and its conclusions and findings remain unchallenged by the Inspector General. Would you agree? I do, and I think it was important, Senator, to establish that an independent investigation found that the Russians sought to interfere in the election and that no Americans conspired with them. I think those are very important findings, and I am grateful to the folks who helped us reach that conclusion. And far from saying that the Mueller investigation is of no consequence, in fact, it is of immense and historic consequence because it shows, as you said, and I'm going to quote you, there was overwhelming evidence that Russian operatives hacked American computers and defrauded American citizens, and that is only the tip of the iceberg of a comprehensive Russian strategy to influence elections, promote social discord, and undermine America. That was your characterization of the report. That is immensely important. What we're saying is of no consequence is, in fact, all of this stuff about Carter Page, about the Steele dossier, because at the end of the day, the reason why that report is of consequence is it shows that the Russians interfered and the Trump campaign welcomed it. Senator, I, I think it's important to recognize, and I, I believe I was consistent throughout my tenure as Deputy Attorney General in trying to make this point, that uh, the, the Russians are on the Russian side. They don't affiliate with the Republican or the Democrat Party. They're on the Russian side, and, and they are an adversary for interfering in our election. That offends and should offend everybody, regardless of your politics. And the reason why we're here today really is to deflect attention from 
an economic crisis, a health care emergency, demonstrations in our streets and communities that legitimately ask for justice. And if we want to fix the problem, what we should do is FISA reform, not rehash a set of allegations that is, in fact, of no consequence. Because the reason why you began the investigation and why the department began the investigation was, first, the Russian government hacked the Democratic National Committee. Second, WikiLeaks published 20,000 emails stolen from the DNC. And third, a Trump campaign official <clears throat> bragged to a foreign government that Russia told the Trump campaign it could help them through the anonymous release of damaging information on Hillary Clinton. That's what set off the investigation. Well, Senator, the only issue I might take with that is that I, I didn't begin the investigation. I did end the investigation, but the investigation had begun nine months before I arrived. But those are, the, those are the reasons that the investigation began, correct? I, I, I wasn't there, so I can't attest to that. Thank you. Senator Hirono, who will be joining us telephonically, is up next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We're in the middle of a pandemic. We've now crossed the grim milestone of more than 100,000 people having died from COVID-19. Our country is in turmoil because last week, Minneapolis, Minneapolis police officers openly murdered George Floyd in full public view. And what was the crime? that he allegedly committed that led Officer Derek Chauvin to shove his knee into Mr. Floyd's neck for more than eight minutes, a claim that a $20 bill he used was fake. The marks of injustice in this case are painful, traumatic, and unbearable, but sadly not isolated in our country, as we have seen too many times in the past few weeks alone. Racism in our country is clear and long-standing. In the midst of all this turmoil, this committee is having a hearing on something that we have already covered exhaustively, that has already been covered exhaustively by the Justice Department's Inspector General in a nearly 500-page report where they interviewed 100 witnesses, reviewed a million documents, and found no documentary or testimonial evidence that political bias or improper motivations influenced the FBI's investigation. Moreover, the investigation was open for an authorized purpose under proper factual predicate. In fact, we know that uh, Christopher Ray, our FBI director, has already implemented some 40 corrective <clears throat> steps based on the Inspector General's report. So this hearing waste this committee's time in a blatant effort to support the president's conspir conspiracy theories and to help the president's re-election. How can these aims be proper use of this committee's time? Mr. Horowitz. No. <laughs> that was the inspector general. Rosenstein, in September 2018, the New York Times reported that you had suggested wearing a wire to secretly record President Trump after he fired FBI Director Comey and linked the firing to the Russian investigation. The article also reported that you discussed recruiting cabinet members to invoke the 25th Amendment to remove Mr. Trump from office. On April 26, 2019, the Washington Post reported that after the New York Times report, you were in danger of losing your job. According to the Post, when President Trump called you for an explanation, you tried to assure the president you were on his team. When discussing Special Counsel Mueller's investigation, you reportedly said, quote, I give the investigation credibility, end quote, and, quote, I can lend the plane. Mr. Rosenstein, did you tell the president I can land the plane regarding Special Counsel Mueller's investigation? You packed a lot into that question, Senator, and uh, I, I, I hope you allow me to answer. Number one, 
the idea that I was involved in some conspiracy to get the president is ridiculous, and I think that uh, I worked for two years with... Well, you know what? You can respond to my specific questions regarding the wearing of the wire, but this first question is, did you tell the president I can land the plane? I, I do not believe I've ever used those words, I can land the plane, Senator, and I have not ever talked about my personal communications with the president, but what I can tell you is what I always said when anyone asked me about the investigation, which was that we would complete it okay. appropriately and expeditiously, and I made no inappropriate commitments. Let me ask you the question about, uh, did you suggest or hint at secretly recording President Trump? I did not suggest yes or, no? or hint at secretly recording President Trump. I, uh, have, you, have you ever discussed with anyone the possibility of invoking the 25th Amendment to remove this president from office? I have never... Uh, in any way suggested that the president should be removed from office under the 25th Amendment. And I can give you a more detailed explanation if you have time. We all know that, uh, that Attorney General Barr made certain uh, characterizations of the Mueller report, which uh, I would say were not accurate, but he did say in a letter that he wrote to Congress, he said, Deputy Attorney General Rob Rosenstein and I have concluded that the evidence developed during the special counsel's investigation is not sufficient to establish that the president committed an obstruction of justice offense. Did Attorney General Barr accurately present your view regarding the obstruction of uh, justice? Senator, I do offense? not believe that the evidence collected by the special counsel warrants prosecution of the president. That is correct. Oh, that's not, that was not my question. It has nothing to do with whether collusion was found. We also know that the uh, that President Trump did not cooperate fully with Mueller's investigation on that point. No, he did note a number of obstruction of justice actions by this president. So, did you agree with uh, Barr's letter that you agree that there was no um, obstruction of justice involved? I, I'm sorry, Senator. That's what I tried to answer the first time. The answer is. Yes, I do not believe that the president committed a crime that warrants prosecution. And that's the issue that we review as prosecutors. No, uh, excuse me. They said, the Mueller report said that they did not find enough evidence to, to go after the president for collusion. And we all know that the Office of Legal Counsel said that the president, a sitting president cannot be indicted, but they did raise a number of obstruction of justice actions by the president and left open the issue of whether or not that would be indictable. But we all know that uh, the Office of Legal Counsel said you can't indict sitting president. And by the way, more than 1,000 formal, former federal prosecutors who served under both Republican and Democratic administrations disagreed with you regarding the obstruction of justice issue. And they wrote that baby the President Trump's conduct described in Special Counsel Mueller's report would, quote, result in multiple felony charges for obstruction of justice, end quote. They emphasize that these are not matters of professional judgment. They further noted that to look at these facts and say that a prosecutor could not probably sustain a conviction for obstruction of justice runs counter to logic and experience. So can you explain why you are right and more than 1,000 former DOJ prosecutors are wrong on the issue of obstruction of justice by this president. Well, Senator, we have a lot more than 1,000 former DOJ prosecutors, and I don't know whether all those people read the entire report or were familiar with all the evidence, but, uh, but I was, and I believe Attorney General Barr has already explained his conclusion. And Senator, I think it's very important when we complete investigations, we reach conclusions, and the department either determines a case merits prosecution or it does not and we determine that that case does not merit prosecution. Now, people are free to express contrary opinions, and because... I think I have to public, repeat myself again. I've read the Mueller report. They did not say that uh, there was not enough evidence with regard to obstruction of justice. Nope. They noted, and I disagree with Mueller. I don't know why he didn't come to the conclusion that there, are, there was actually enough evidence on the obstruction of yeah. justice issue, Sen but that they could not... Senator they could not... Indict no. the president. That no. part Thank is really clear. Thank you. Thank you. I, Thank I you think, very Senator, much. Thank you. if I may Thank explain, you. No, Chairman, that's good. That's I think good. that's unfair, Senator, because the 
Uh, the investigation was concluded. It was appropriately reviewed. No one recommended in favor of prosecution. The Attorney General and I determined the prosecution was not warranted, and that well, is I think conclusion. that question has been asked and answered. I appreciate it very much. Uh, thank you very much, Senator Crapo. Senator Booker. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Um, I'm finding myself repeating a theme from earlier in this uh, this last few weeks, which is I just don't understand why we as a committee are focusing on things that further deepen the jangling discords of partisan posturing in America. I, I, I might be missing something, but to me, we're in a pandemic like we haven't seen since 1918, an economic crisis like we haven't seen since the Great Depression, and uprisings all across America like we haven't seen since 1968. And yet I've been down here for a month or so, the first hearing in this committee we held for a judicial seat that's not open till September, and now we're doing something that is affirming <laughs> discord in this country at a time that the hurting in America right now, that we could actually answer that by having a committee hearing on the issues that speak to the heart of our country right now. I talk to people on both sides of the aisle, not just in my state, but on this committee in this Congress about what we could be doing together to deal with the issues that are related to the savage murder of, 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 of George Floyd. And there's goodwill, I tell you, that, that we could demonstrate right now. I know that the, the, the chairman is gonna have some committee hearings, but I just come from a school of thought that Justice delayed is justice denied, and, and our delay in meeting the urgency of this moment is problematic. I, I know the goodness on the other side of the aisle. Hell, I think I'm Senator Kennedy's second favorite quarry in all the Senate. And so I'm just gonna repeat for the record things that have been said. First, the Justice Department Inspector General has found unequivocally that the FBI's investigation into the links between the Trump campaign and Russia had a legitimate basis, those are the words, and was not motivated by political bias. That is the Inspector General's words. Second, Special Counsel Mueller, appointed and overseen by Mr. Rosenstein, identified, quote, numerous links between the Russian government and the Trump campaign and found that the Trump campaign, quote, expected it would benefit electorally from Russian interference. I quote the President of the United States, Russia, if you are listening, come on. And, and finally, and third, Special Counter Mueller, Mueller's investigation resulted in a total of 199 counts against 37 people and entities with seven guilty pleas and two convictions at trial. There is simply no question that this investigation was justified. And there's simply no question that foreign interference was a threat to our elections in 2006 and remains one today. Are we having a hearing on how to stop the Russians from interfering in our elections, which are 150 plus days from now? No. Are we having a hearing on urgent issues dealing with this pandemic? No. Are we having a hearing on the economic devastation happening in our country? No. Are we having a hearing on the broken criminal justice system that threatens the lives of black Americans every single day in this nation? No. We're sitting here showing the American public that we argue with each other very well at a time that Rome is burning. And, and so I'm shifting gears, because I'm excited to have you here. You're, you're familiar with the crisis going on in this country. Have, did you watch the eight minutes and 46 seconds of the murder of George Floyd? Did you watch that? I, I watched, I'm not sure I watched the entire eight minutes and 46 seconds, but I watched it, yes. Do, do you know about the uh, Obama administration's task force, on uh, 21st century task force on policing? I'm familiar with it. Do, do you know they had Black Lives Matters people on that? That, that task force. I don't think that I knew that. The, the big city police chiefs. Yes. So the, the, the question, I'm looking at my time is up right now, but the one question I have, and I'm gonna submit the rest of mine for the record, is that in September 2007, Attorney General shut, uh, and, and those, those recommendations of that task force, 
bipartisan task force, police officers, black lives, incredible task force, have not been implemented. I wish we could go into that further, but Attorney General Sessions shut down a Justice Department program that enabled the Office of Community-Oriented Policing Services, called the COPS program, shut it down that that office's work to do work collaboratively, I'm not talking about consent decrees, that program had a, had a part that worked collaboratively with police departments <clears throat> and issued public reports on how to improve police practices. Do you think that ending that collaborative reform program made the streets of our nation safer or our police departments better? Senator, I don't mean to quibble with you. I, I, don't, I, I don't recall that we ended collaborative reform. I, I, don't, I didn't say any collaborative reform. I said specifically within the COPS program, there was an effort going on specifically within the, under the COPS program that was ended. Is, do you not remember that? Um, I, I, I'm happy to review it, Senator. I don't have a specific record. So I, I will submit my, 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 my questions for the record. I'm grateful for, for having the six minutes that have been allocated to me. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Rosenstein's testimony is completely at odds with the factual record looks to be yet another sad attempt by the president and his men to rewrite the history of their actions in 2017. They have found in Mr. Rosenstein, then and now, a willing accessory in that effort. Would you like to respond? Yes, thank you, Senator. Uh, I think one thing you need to appreciate, Senator, is that uh, I had a very strong team working with me at the Department of Justice. I had some of the finest lawyers uh, that I have ever met working with me at the Department of Justice. It was a team, it included Trump appointees, it included career people, I'm sure there were Republicans and Democrats. Uh, and, and that's why I'm confident, Senator, in what I did, because I, I spoke with my team, not Mr. McCabe, I didn't rely on Mr. McCabe, I spoke with my team about the actions that I was taking to make sure that they were appropriate. I did not say that Mr. McCabe misled me. That wasn't my, those were not my words. I think he's responding to somebody's question. What I said was, he did not reveal the Comey memos to me for a week. And that is true. And he revealed them to me only a couple of hours before they showed up in the New York Times. And he did not reveal to me that he was having internal deliberations with his team about whether to target very high profile people for investigation. And his position is he didn't have to do that until after he had signed off on it. And that may be true under the rules as they were written at the time, but my view, Senator, was that's the kind of thing that I needed to know. Uh, and so I haven't accused him of, of uh, making misstatements to me. I've simply said that he wasn't fully forthcoming. And I think that's accurate. Uh, and I'm confident, Senator, that uh, the folks who work with me will back me up on that. I don't wish Mr. McCabe any ill will. He's suing over his termination. The court will make an appropriate determination about that. But uh, the bottom line is, Senator, for whatever reason, he did not feel comfortable disclosing that information to me for a week. Uh, and I think I should have known that earlier. And I think I had a right to know it. And I think I had a right to know the deliberations in inside the FBI because Mr. McCabe knew I had just come into this job. I hadn't been around for nine months. I didn't know what they were investigating except for what he represented to me. Uh, and that was my only source of information. I didn't have the underlying evidence. I didn't talk to the witnesses. So you were relying on what you were told by the McCabe team, basically, right? I was relying upon the information that came up from the FBI, and I have not made any unfair allegations against Mr. McCabe, Senator. Yeah. Well, I, all I can say as we wrap up here that Mr. McCabe will have the same opportunity you have to sit in that chair or hopefully in a smaller committee room and tell us what happened. And the reason that I think he's an appropriate witness is I find it hard to believe, maybe it's possible, uh, that the subsource, the Russian subsource that was interviewed in January <coughs> and on two different occasions after January 2017, told FBI investigators, counterintelligence analysts at the dossier, which is the primary document to get a warrant against Carter Page, was not reliable. It was bar talk. It was hearsay. It was never meant to be used the way it was being used. I find it hard to believe that when the case fell apart against Carter Page in terms of a warrant application, it didn't work its way up at the top. Maybe, maybe it's just two people at the bottom 
that withheld exculpatory information. They never shared it with anybody. But that's what we're trying to find out is how could you renew a warrant application in April and June of 2017 when the subsource tells you in January of 2017 the document you need to get the warrants a bunch of garbage. I want to know how you continue to renew those two warrants. Who knew what, when, and where? You say you didn't know. I believe you. But somebody had to know, and Mr. McCabe was the guy most directly in charge, so I look forward to talking with him. We'll hold the record open. Mr. and. Yes, please. Uh, I, I just want to be clear about one thing. Okay. Uh, have there been any additional facts today that were not in the IG's reports? Yeah, I think uh, what I learned is that the August memo, uh, his team consulted with the, the Mueller team, but the information in the August memo came from the Mueller people. I didn't know that. Mr. Well, Rosenstein, does that let, change your conclusion? Let me just clarify, Senator, that <clears throat> when Mr. Mueller came on board, he inherited the team that was doing the investigation. So it's true that they're the Mueller people, but they're people that he inherited from the well, department. Like straight, uh, Strzok and Page, right? Correct. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know all that. But anyway, a lot more to find out. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll hold the record open for questions and uh, to be continued. Thank you. Thank you, Senator.